I don't know what cinematic mode is, but we're gonna try it for a little bit today, okay? Ignore my face, it's a little bit red. I'm not wearing makeup. My hair is a bit... I straightened it yesterday and I don't normally straighten my hair anymore. Like, and I prefer having it curly. So, this is just, this is just, this is it, this is it. I have not made a video in a hot minute. Like, I'm just, I'm busy. <laughs> I haven't actually read in a hot minute surprise surprise like it's just so that's just so me now that's just so me so i may not have been reading any books but you can be damn well sure that i've been buying them so i have a whole bag here full of books that i have just look at this cute little sunflower bag that my friend gave me but i have this bag full of books that i've just accumulated oh wait there's more here as well there's this one and there's this yep forgot about those two we'll just add that to the pile but yeah i've just been hoarding books i've been collecting books i am not a bookworm i'm a book dragon so yeah i just i collect i don't actually read <laughs> i'm hoping that like now that like the weather is getting nicer like you know i'll go and i'll sit outside and i'll do a little bit of tanning and i'll read a book because that's the time when I actually do my best reading is when the weather's nice because I'll sit outside because I'm one of those people that I just do not enjoy sitting outside like just sitting and trying to tan and just soak up the sun rays I need to be doing something like I, sometimes I'll take my laptop out with me and I'll do a little bit of writing or I'll just I'll need to take a book and then I sit out there and I cremate my body for like a good few hours and I get so much reading done like the times that I've actually read a book in a day is because I've been outside toasting like a little marshmallow. The weather is getting better. That hopefully means that I'll actually do some reading this year. But anyway, so today's video, I'm just going to show you all these books that I've just bought in the last like a few months or so. We will start with a book. I'm actually, I did start reading it. I read the first 70 pages um, and it's called No One Saw a Thing by Andrea Mara. I started reading this um, about a month ago? I don't actually know. Time is flying. Time is flying by. Like since I took on my promotion this year as a restaurant manager and it's just been every day I'm sort of like I'm waiting for it to be the weekends again. It's just time is just I don't know time is just a weird concept at the moment like I feel like every weekend is just coming around so rapidly and then before I know it, it's a new week we're already in May. <laughs> we're already in May. Anyway, I don't know when I started reading this, but I read the first 70 pages and it's the story of a woman whose two young daughters got on the train in front of her, um, but the doors the doors closed because she was pushing a pram and they were sort of rushing to get to a train and like the kids just hopped on and she was pushing a pram and the doors closed. So then what happens is she contacts, or no, so they call security and they're like oh like we've got the children like they're at like a next stop or whatever like things like that she gets there and only one of her children is there and it's the youngest one so i can't remember what their ages were uh, i think the youngest one's like two and then i don't know if the other one was like four maybe or like a little bit older so the story is all about just i guess trying to find this missing child or like what's happened so i will read the summary to you no one saw it happen everyone is lying someone is to blame your two little girls jump on the train ahead of you. As you try to join them, the doors slide shut and the train moves away, leaving you behind. It's only when you reach the next stop that you truly begin to panic because there aren't two children waiting for you on the platform. There is only one. Has your other daughter got lost? Been taken by a passing stranger? Or perhaps the culprit is closer to home than you think? So already, like, I was enjoying this the first night. Like, I just picked it up one night and I started reading it and I got, like, 70 pages in. And I'm thinking it's already going to be quite interesting. Like the the main character and her husband, or like her whole family, were having a little meet up with her husband's like college besties or like uni pals or school friends. We're having a little reunion, <clears throat> and already I'm a bit like I'm a bit suspicious of everyone. I'm like someone is to blame here. You know, someone is to blame. But I love I love a story like this. I love like I do love like a missing. Not necessarily like a missing child, like a missing person story. I always hope they do have a happy ending and they don't end up dead. It hadn't quite gripped, I just haven't picked it up again yet. So I don't know, maybe I'll do a review once I finish it. Famous last words, but yeah, that is no one saw a thing. I got that one in Tesco, it was in like the two for nine pound 
offer so I was looking for something else to buy and I picked up this one called The Murder After the Night Before by Katie Brent. I love the cover, like, I just love the cover. So I didn't know, I don't know anything about this, I've never heard about this book before, I just saw it, I liked the cover, I read the summary and I was like okay. There was something about this, the way the summary was written that like gave me a little ick. <laughs> it was only because there was this one line in it that says, I've gone viral for the worst reasons and I don't know why. I feel like I spoke about this at one point, but I hate sort of like modern day technology and the internet in like literature and tv and film like do you know when it's like when someone's sat in a high school and it's like that video of you falling down the stairs went viral it has a million views and i'm like does that really happen i mean i suppose it does like people do go viral <laughs> but i don't know why that sort of new age of technology and all that i don't like it in books I, i'm so weird that way i don't know why i i just don't know i don't know why i hate social media in literature not so much TV and film actually, that's a bit different, but in literature for some reason I don't like it. That's it's weird. I don't know, I think I'm living in like a Pride and Prejudice era. Something bad happened last night, but I can't remember a thing. I've woken up with a hangover from hell, a stranger in my bed, and I've gone viral for the worst reasons. My best friend Posey is dead. The police think it was a tragic accident. I know she was murdered. There's only one thing stopping me from dying of shame. I need to find the killer. That like that gives me the ick as well. I don't know why. I think it could be good. Um, I hope it's not like the summary. If that's like written as like the main character, gave me the ick a little bit. It just did. I don't know why. But I was like, do you know what? I love a mystery, so I'm gonna give it a chance. We'll see how that goes. Next up, we have a couple books that I actually just picked up yesterday at my favorite bookshop, V Works. And this one was on sale for £3 and it's by Beth O'Leary and it's called The No Show. I have a few Beth O'Leary books. She's not my favourite author, but her stories and her characters are always quite well written. I'm just not really a romance person and a few of her books, like I've read The Flat Chair and I read The Switch. And they were both fine. I don't have any real issues with it. I feel like her characters are well written. I'm just, they're a bit romantic and I'm not a romance person. This one was on sale and I think I'd heard of it before. And it kind of has me a little bit interested just from the summary. So it says, 8.52 a.m. Siobhan's looking forward to her date with Joseph. Breakfast on Valentine's Day surely means something. Dot, dot, dot. So where is he? 2.43 p.m. Miranda's hoping that a Valentine's Day lunch with Carter will be the perfect way to celebrate her new job. But why hasn't he shown up? 6.30 p.m. Joseph Carter promised to be Jane's fake boyfriend at a dreaded engagement party tonight, but he's not here. Dot dot dot. Meet Joseph Carter. That is, if you can find him. I don't know, it just kind of like, it sounds a bit fun. It sounds a bit wacky. So, I am, I just say I do like Beth O'Leary's writing and I like the way her characters are written. I always feel like they're quite well developed, so I'm hoping that it'll be good fun. It sounds quite like, it just sounds a bit funny. So, I'm like, it sounds, it sounds fun. Then I also picked up Those We Drown by Amy Goldsmith. This was also just three pound in the works. I just really liked the cover. I thought it looked really pretty. It should have been the trip of a lifetime. When Liv lands an all expenses paid opportunity to study abroad the luxury cruise ship, the EOS, I think it's pronounced EOS, for a semester, she can't believe her luck, especially since it will offer the chance to spend time with Will, her ex-best friend who's barely spoken to her since the night their relationship changed forever. I bet you one of them has feelings for the other. <laughs> but, as <she's, laughs> but as soon as she steps on board, Liv realises just out of her depth she is. With Will, with the rest of the semester students. Including the brittle and beautiful Constantine, who may be hiding his own... T That's a man? Constantine's a man? I thought that was a woman. Who may be hiding his own ties to the EOS, and most of all with the Sirens, three glamorous and mysterious influencers. Oh no. Who seem to have the run of the ship. I hate influencers. I hate, I hate influencers with a passion. That's another thing I hate in like literature and TV and film. It's when someone's like, oh, I'm an influencer. And I'm like, Ugh. Like, there's nothing wrong with being an influencer in real life. Honestly, I have total respect for anybody who can make a living out of literally just, like, creating content online. Like, kudos to you. But I just hate it. <laughs> I 
hate it and like I hate infection I really do I think it's just as I say it's just me not hating sort of a new age of technology and I think what it is as well I saw a tweet a wee while ago that mentioned how like whenever books include something very from this time so for example oh they, they quoted a, a book that was talking about like Taylor's version of like her songs and then the author continued to explain like what that meant like how she re-recorded her whole albums and it was like it kind of made the book feel very set right now if that makes sense whereas like it kind of like you know otherwise like a book could be timeless like if it's just set and I mean I don't know I mean I, I sort of get what they meant because it made me realize that yeah I actually don't like a lot of things when like terminology from nowadays is used or like influencers and like different aspects of social media yeah I don't know what it is I don't know what it is about like something that ve feels very 2020 being in a book I also agree I'm like, maybe I am a bit like old timey that I do prefer a book to not have I love it when like phones don't exist in books like especially if it's like something that doesn't really need like obviously I know in some stories like you genuinely need like a phone because you need to contact if there's an emergency or etc or if you're calling your friend but I don't know what it is I, I just don't like there's a lot of it I don't like I don't know why maybe I'm just maybe it's just, just me rebelling against like technology and everything I don't know anyway back to where we were mysterious influencers who seem to have the run of the ship. Olive well, quickly discovers that the only reason she was invited to join the trip is because another girl disappeared shortly after enrolling and no one seems to know what happened to her. When further disappearances rock the ship and strange creatures begin haunting Liv's dreams, she wonders, is the, e is the Eos hiding a dark secret within its shadowy decks? The truth will come out at a price only. How much is Liv willing to pay? I hope this does have a bit of a sort of supernatural creature aspect to it but I'm also quite intrigued like it sounds like it could be just a fun mystery I also just really like the cover but we shall see we shall see next up we have two books that I picked up oh my goodness I forgot how much is in them two books that I picked up and I was doing a little bit of shopping in my hometown I was getting some birthday presents for my friends and I went into one of the bookshops that we have here that I really like it's called well read books it's a bit of like second hand and new books and I love their classic selection, they have loads. And I picked up this lovely cover of Emma, cover, this lovely copy of Emma, which honestly, underneath the dust cover, if I can get under it, I thought, oh, never mind, it's this. <laughs> the, the reveal, nothing. <laughs> Why did I think this was pretty underneath? I love a book that just looks straight out of an old library you know like it's but they're not crusty like they're not old and crusty but I really liked um the cover I thought it was really nice I really want to read it so I picked up that and I also picked up my first ever Arthur Conan Doyle book because I would like to read the Sherlock Holmes stories and I feel like I know like I should maybe maybe read them in order I'm not really 100% sure but I decided to pick up this one which is called The Return of Sherlock Holmes because I just thought it looked really pretty it was only four pounds I'm pretty sure and I thought it's so pretty like I love I love this like it just looks again as I say just looks like it belongs in like an old library like I would love all my classic books to just have this nice like they're sturdy just very nice and then when I was away with my friend, we were in TK Maxx because I saw on TikTok that they had a whole bunch of like books at like a really good price. So I picked up 1984 by George Orwell, which I've never actually read before. I've never seen any of like, the, I'm sure there's movies, maybe TV shows, I don't know. This was only 329. Um, I quite like the cover. I really don't know much about it like I only know about the whole like my brother is watching type of thing I could read the summary on the back to you but this video is already over 50 minutes long but yeah so I'm quite I'm looking for I want to read more classics so picked up 1984 then I have I picked up this was also in TK Maxx Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I really like Gillian Flynn. Gillian Flynn is another author that I'm like, anything she reads, if I see her name on it, I'll pick it up because I loved Golden Girl. Obviously, I already knew the story by the time I read, like I've never actually seen the movie, but I, or it's one of those things I feel like everybody sort of knows, 
now that like sort of what Gone Girl is about like we've seen that much just I've seen TikTok videos and all that I feel like I just knew for the longest time what Gone Girl was like anyway I don't want to say it out loud in case people actually don't know but I I also read what was it called I've read Sharp Object as well and I thought it was really good like I couldn't put it down I read it so fast so I saw this and b I barely even read the summary at the back because I was like if it's Gillian Flynn I'm in I am in Libby Day was seven when her family was murdered she survived by hiding in a closet and famously testified that her older brother Ben was the killer 25 years later the Kill Club, a secret society obsessed with notorious crimes, hires Libby to try to discover proof that may free Ben. But when Libby's search uncovers an unimaginable truth, she finds herself right back where she started, on the run from a killer. I love Young and Flynn. Like, sharp objects kept me on the edge of my seat. And even reading Gone Girl kept me on the edge of my seat, even though I already knew what happened. But I love her. I love Gillian and Flynn. Oh, we're almost at the end. I feel like I saw this book on TikTok, but maybe I didn't. But I picked this one up in the works, and it's called Belladonna, and it's by Adeline Grace. It just looked cool. The cover looked cool. I didn't actually. Did I read it much? I don't know if I actually did read the summer. I just thought it looked pretty. <laughs> Your name is no curse, little bird. I just like the taste of it. Oh. Okay. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> Orphaned as a child, Signa Farrell has been raised by a string of guardians, each more interested in her wealth and her well-being, and each has met an untimely end. Isn't that like the, the children from a series of unfortunate events? Her only remaining relatives are the elusive Hawthorns, an eccentric family living at Thorn Grove, an estate both glittering and gloomy. When a restless spirit appears, claiming she was poisoned, Signa... Signa realises the Hawthorns could be in grave danger and enlists the help of a surly stable boy to hunt down the killer. But Signa's best chance of uncovering the murderer is an alliance with Death himself. And as the mystery unfurls, Signa realises their growing connection may be more irresistible than she dared imagine. Are we going to be Death? Is Death going to be a character? Are we going to be in love with Death? I don't know anything about this. I have a funny feeling I saw it on TikTok and... Was there mixed reviews? I don't know. But I thought the cover was pretty. It was only 350. It's in the pile. And lastly, it's a big boy. Ah, last big boys. Itty bitty boys. Mississippi Boy of Inner City Boys. We have for 750 the reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. Holly Jackson, I'm pretty sure, is the author of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Yes. And I think, does Holly Jackson also do The Cruel Prince? I always think they're two separate like authors, but I've realised quickly that actually, do you know what? No, I don't think they are. I'm pretty sure that's the same person. I didn't actually like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I still haven't reread it yet because I was planning to reread it this year just to see if my opinion improved on it because I did not like it the first time. It's mainly because I did not like the main character and the way she spoke. I found her very cringe. I found the dialogue cringe. I can't remember if the mystery was good so I'm hoping that if I reread it I might change my mind on it and then I might want to read the others but we shall see anyway this was down from 49.9 to 7.50 and I read the summary and I was like sounds interesting so we'll give it a bash 18 year old Belle has lived her whole life in the shadow of her mom's disappearance oh why did I say mom <sighs> stop it Laura 18 year old Belle has lived her whole life in the shadow of her mum's mysterious disappearance 16 years ago Rachel Price vanished and young Belle was the only witness Rachel's gone, presumed dead. The case is dragged up from the past when the Price family agrees to a true crime documentary. Belle can't wait for filming to end, for life to go back to normal, but then Rachel reappears and life will never be normal again. Lights, camera, lies. I love a hardback. Let's actually look at this one. Let's see if this reveals any better. Yup. More. There we are. Yup. <laughs> I just thought it sounded quite good. I like a sort of a mystery, a thriller, a, you know, a missing person, especially when they reappear and it's a bit like, ooh, where have you been? I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. So that is all the books I've bought recently. Oh, I also bought this yesterday because I've recently got into puzzles and I bought this one and it's called Cats in Quarantine. 
and look at how cute it is look i love it it's really cute i also got this coaster that um says i don't can you see that purple that says still growing and it's like mushrooms and i don't know if that's from anything i just thought it was cute i love wee mushrooms let's see if i can stack these in a nice way you gotta get that nice that glamour shot <laughs> she's my look. oh here we are oh lovely absolutely lovely my pride and joys <laughs> they all sound quite good i am excited so thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in my next video my next one whatever that may be you never know it might be a review of one of these it might be a review of anything i'm terrible at doing reviews i never do them <laughs> but yeah um thank you so much <laughs> for watching um and let me know if you've read any of these books if you've heard of them if they're on your tbr and yeah happy reading ciao